Hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art, and today is Friday, October 6th, 2017. And as always, we'll take a look back at last week's eBay auction results. It was a pretty interesting week. It was a really good week if you were a silk buyer or a buyer of uh, uh, transitional wares, uh, Chan Chi wares, and Sumitsuki. There's some great things up. And we're also going to take a look at the uh, auction results from last uh, several weeks ago, uh, Sotheby's auction. We did a video on it this week in case you missed it. And we're going to take a quick look at some of the, the uh, shenanigans that's about to go on down at Eden Galleries down in Marietta, Georgia. Um, I hate to sound like I'm beating these people up, but uh, we did a post on it a few weeks ago, uh, on a, a few months ago on a sale they did. And we got a, some pretty nasty emails from people that uh, I think are connected with that auction house. any rate, uh, we're going to start here. This was, this was a nice uh, uh, transitional period Chinese blue and white plate that was put up by a seller over in, in, in Europe. He, uh, Hugh is his name with a number after, I don't remember, but he gets good things. He doesn't sell all that often. But this was a nice piece, uh, cobalt blue with brown dressing and uh, beautifully done, and it did pretty well. Uh, there's a big collector, there's a collector market for these. Uh, this one brought $465, and uh, excuse the car outside, we have the windows open today, it's about 70 degrees, which is pretty unusual for Cape Ann in the middle of October, it's very nice. And uh, then we had this, This he also had this up, this very, very pretty uh, Japanese uh, 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 piece of uh, early Sametsuki, it looks, it looks almost like a um, um, uh, uh, piece of Nabashima. Beautifully done. Love the, uh, love the uh, sort of lopsided style to the plate. Nice blue rim on it. And it did quite well. It brought $742, which is a good price for those. There's been a lot of um, uh, movement in the last uh, six months, I've noticed, on good Japanese blue and white and early Amari wares, if they're interesting. And uh, then this was my favorite. This was my favorite of the lots that got this fellow had up. Beautifully done Japanese taste uh, with a goose on the shoreline and these swirling waves down at the bottom. Here's the back of it. And uh, not surprisingly, he bought this from, uh, uh, from McPherson over in uh, uh, London uh, some time ago. Um, Bob McPherson, he sells great things. He has a nice gallery. And I... Um, and uh, he, got, he got this uh, from him, and it did fine. It brought $567, um, so uh, not bad at all, not bad. And then our friend William over in the UK had this. He's been finding a lot of medals lately, and this is a very nice silver gilt uh, uh, belt buckle and uh, very good detail, fine detail all over. It's a 19, late 19th century piece probably, but beautifully done if you look at it carefully. A lot of good quality in this piece. Um, here's a look at the back of it. That's what they look like when they're done right. Very, very uh, well made. Um, a little, some sort of mark stamped into it right there and there on each end. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $651, uh, which is a nice price for one of those. But that's a good buckle. You don't find them very often like that. And this was perhaps one of the great little buys of the uh, week. It was a molded, uh, you can see that it was, it was pressed out in a mold, uh, 18th century iron red with some cobalt uh, plate. And it's got the, uh, the peaches and the lotus pods with citron fingers and uh, fruit berries up here. Just a beautiful little plate and it was in very nice condition. There was nothing wrong with this plate. And uh, it went for a bargain. Somebody got a great buy, $84. Um, that's a terrific buy for a nice 18th century plate with a molded decoration. And then after that was this, this rather, rather, rather pretty late 18th, perhaps early 19th century uh, uh, platter uh, uh, with a, a lot of gilding in the rim and a very Chinese taste center uh, area of decoration with birds and, and flowers and so forth. And a nice flat unglazed bottom, that's pretty much the typical bottom you see on these. There it is, and uh, it did it did pretty well. It brought three hundred and fifty-seven dollars, but it's a good buy. These, these platters are uh, getting more and more reasonable. We're going to see another one in a few minutes, and then there was this. This was very similar to one that was in the bottom sale earlier this week that had a four to six thousand dollar estimate, as I recall, something like that. It was a big estimate, uh, but this is a nice silver enameled um, um, 
a, a, a mirror, uh, I mean a magnifying glass. It may have been a mirror at one point. They might have put a magnifying glass in it. I'm not sure with a jade handle, but a very fine quality. And these, these enamel pieces seem to be uh, getting a little more popular, but they're way under the money in the market, I think, for what they are. There's a lot of good work in these. These are sort of the minor crafts of China. And, uh, the, the, but this one did fine. It brought $759. Nice piece. <clears throat> and uh, we'll move over to this. This was uh, sold by uh, Shangri-La, cer the ceramics and antiques folks over in the Netherlands. And uh, very attractive transitional period uh, bottle vase, uh, nice cobalt blue decoration. It uh, had a little repair, as I recall, up here in the neck, the top of the mouth somewhere. But a good old example, a nice honest example. And it went for just a hair under $1,000, $998. So there you go. It's a th over 1000 of course, when you get done with shipping. And well, there was this vase. This was a really pretty um, 19th century Famille Rose vase with all these uh, figures on it and poems and inscriptions. These always do well, whether they're cups and saucers or there's the bottom of it. Very typical mid to you know second half of the 19th century vase. Uh, nice looking piece. There's more, more and more you have these uh, characters identifying the soldiers. And uh, here's a poem at the bottom with a cash symbol and zodiological symbols pressed into it. Lots going on. And it did well. It brought $3,163. Uh, were it just a plain one with just some figures on it, you know, it probably would have brought uh, 1200 somewhere around there. But you add all that calligraphy, it really drives the price. And there was this ice piece. Of, this was a nice uh, rose mandarin uh, a baluster jar with lid. Still had its original cover. It was very nice, sort of pr um, um, prominent on the shoulders. These uh, gilt foo lions with the rings. All very classical, and this nicely shaped, I like the shape of the neck on this, it was quite appealing. Um, and it, it did fine, it, it brought, uh, what did it bring? It brought $1,000, $1,011, uh, uh, which is not a bad price for that. Uh, it's a good trade, it's a nice looking thing, and it had a lid, which a lot of them don't. And um, then we put this in, for those of you that like stands, and those of you don't know much about stands, if you see really good uh, old hand carved stands out there, like this, and you're visiting an antique shop or going to a show, grab them. Um, they are very desirable to, uh, to collectors. Um, they, uh, the Chinese uh, porcelain collectors, jade collectors, bronze collectors, they're always looking for great stands. And this was a nice one. It was a wave patterned example. It became sort of popular in the late Ming and early Qing dynasty. This was a good one. It had lots of detail in it and it appeared to be in quite good shape. Here's the bottom of it. Nice stained hardwood. I'm not sure what kind of wood it is. You can't tell because they, they, they colored it. But uh, excellent, excellent condition. And you can see it was good size. Okay, it was a good size stand. This wasn't a two inch stand. And it brought $2,496. And I suspect it's going to end up with either a, a nice uh, piece of jade on it or a bronze in the very near future. <clears throat> and then we had this. This was a, a, a rather nice Wutsai uh, Kangxi uh, plate. Uh, with birds uh, within a, a sort of a divided sectioned rim, beautifully done, uh, nice detail on it, and it was in good condition. And uh, it brought $545, pretty good price. And there was a pair of Satsuma vases. We saw these, we like, we don't do a lot with Satsuma because we don't see a lot of really good Satsuma on, our, on here. But uh, this was a nice pair and uh, quite desirable, good deep cobalt ground and this nice brocade pattern on the corners dividing the sections with uh, geishas and garden scenes with the roosters and so forth. Very attractive. And uh, here's the bottom of it, signed, sealed, and all that. And uh, the pair brought $932. And let me just check, see if I can quickly tell you how big they were. They were only about nine inches tall. These were small, okay? They looked big in the photos. That's, that's why I wanted to point that out. These weren't 16 inch jars. These were nine inch jars but a f perfectly good price. And then there was this rather nice robin's egg blue, um, I meant to blow this up before, robin's egg blue snuff bottle. It had one little firing flower up here on the shoulder. Uh, this is a late 19th century example. There it is. It had a little nick out of the foot, but it was on the inside, so it isn't really much of a problem. And uh, it did fine. It brought, uh, what did it bring? About $132, as I recall, $132.71. And then there was this, these very pretty pair of double gourd uh, wine pots with dragon uh, handles, but it's a match pair, which is quite nice. 
and uh, here are the covers okay like that and uh, see if we can see the bottoms there they are the 19th century uh, uh, examples but well done you can see the little spur marks on the bottoms you see the bottoms glaze like this you often see spur marks it's one of the few times that you see spur marks on Chinese porcelain they were not commonly used well not commonly used like they were in Japan anyway and uh, they did well they brought thirteen hundred and forty one dollars but quite attractive um, and, and uh, pairs are always desirable and this, this really nice, very pretty, small flambe glaze, uh, probably, let me see the bottom of this for a second here. Um, not, uh, early 19th century, probably, but good looking flambe glaze with this brown dressing on the bottom. Um, nice little uh, brush, uh, brush washer and a water pot. And uh, it brought $901. Uh, good, a good price for that. But scholar's objects, as I've said so many times, are always in demand. People love scholar's objects. It's a whole, it's a whole group of people that just love collecting them, and uh, that was, you know, that was a good one. And now we're into. The, we're going to go through some textiles now. Uh, eBay has sort of become mecca for text people selling Chinese silks and textiles. We, and last week there was some terrific rank badges up. And this one I, I liked. Uh, I, I liked quite a bit. The colors were good. Good solid 19th century badge, a nice decoration, and uh, it brought $360, which was not a huge price for that. I think that was quite reasonable. And then there was this this one, another one with a foo lion standing on uh, on a rocky shoreline with rue heads and so forth. And it was framed, it was sort of nicely framed, and uh, uh, did it did pretty well. It brought $885. Uh, it's a it's a good looking Mandarin badge, and. Uh, this is a, a dealer that sells things like this once in a while. He's not a big seller. When he gets things, he gets nice things. And then there was this, this square uh, hat stand. Uh, very nice, late 19th, early 20th century, but uh, good good decoration. And uh, it did it did quite well. It brought $1,617, okay? Uh, what do they have it listed as? A vase lantern. No, it's a hat stand, but that's okay. Uh, it was a good example with figures. And... Um, as I recall, it was in good shape and it had script on it right there. And without the script, uh, it probably would have brought 600 or $700 less. Just so you know, script is really important because it's one of, the, one of the arts. And when it's added, it adds value. And this was a very fine, this was, I think, a really great buy. If you buy Chinese export, this was a fabulous buy. A really nice, sort of large uh, Nanking charger but of the finest quality this type of nanking is the best kind uh, the quality of the detail the fine work all of this up in here the way it's painted this is a really fine example of a late 19th century nanking and it doesn't get any better than that and this went for a bargain i think 355 dollars okay uh, that was a heck of a good buy to someone i think really do and uh, here's another rank badge that was up last week a nice color nice old one peaches uh, the crane nice wave pattern sort of unusual the endless knot some buddhist symbols thrown in but a, a good looking badge and uh the edge of it had some uh some of you see where the old edging had pulled off but this was a good looking badge and uh it did pretty well it brought four hundred dollars um i think sometimes people start these with opening bids that are a little too high and they discourage competition so at the end, there aren't as many people paying attention uh, because I've seen badges like, like this one and the other one that went for 400 that start at 10 bucks and end up bringing off in a couple of hundred dollars more than this. And then there was this, this rather nice, this Chinese, but it's sort of a French form uh, uh, Bombay uh, chest, like a little, like a, like a Cassoni, uh, but all reticulated, good, good, good Chinese silver. Um, here's, here's a detail underneath. There's some, uh, some work of the apple blossoms and this beautifully uh, reticulated background that it was set on. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $638. This is from a silver seller that we always look out for. He gets great things. His username is Super Shrink. He's located actually here out in uh, uh, western central Massachusetts. He gets nice things. He has a good eye. And this was one of the surprises of the week. This was a, a very pretty pink ladies robe, a uh, 20th century robe, but uh, beautifully done. A lot of good detail on it, 
but um, this this is something now to watch out for. There it is here, and here. Uh, good quality work, nice color, good condition. What do you see what this thing brought? Four thousand uh, dollars. That's a real surprise, I think. Uh, it wasn't that many years ago that robes like this would they'd go through auctions for literally a hundred dollars, fifty dollars, and that wasn't that long ago. Within the last twenty years, so it looks like things are changing for these um, really nicely embroidered uh, ladies' robes. And then last was this, this rather nice uh, Dragon Ball. Uh, this caught our eye uh, when it first went up, uh, uh, I think the two weekends ago we've had it. We've had it up for two weekends. This is a nice bowl. They made a lot of bad copies of this bowl, and they made them in sets even. But this is a good one. This is a rather attractive one. There's the bottom of it. Nice detail, nice foot rim, okay? This is a uh, 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 really well done, um, nice looking Guangzhou bowl, and it brought $3,716, which might surprise some people, but that's what it brought. All right, and now over to uh, to here. This is the uh, YouTube video we did last weekend on the Sotheby's results, and we covered uh, a pretty wide range of the uh, items that were in the sale. Uh, we discussed the uh, Famille Rose vases and this really nice Ming. Uh, charger, you want to check it out. Um, uh, we're trying to provide more and more information when we do these uh, looks, look backs at uh, auctions to give you some descriptions and what we what we can fit in for uh, information. And then you're over here. This is the uh, sale. It's coming up at Eden Galleries um, on the. Uh, I think it's coming up this weekend. Uh, you want to be. Let me just double check the uh, dates on this thing. We did a post on it the other day to sort of warn people, October 7th and 8th. And uh, this is the sale they've got coming with the, uh, you know, it's obviously, it means it's supposed to be a Ming Dynasty bowl. It's an obvious brand new copy and uh, these reproduction Qing bowls. And uh, again, they have the Yuan knockoffs of the Yu Hudun Chu Ping uh, vase. This time they've dropped it. Somebody put it in a case to make it look good, I guess. And uh, it goes on and on, and it goes on and on, um, just really uh, chock-a-block full of copies of porcelain. Here's, here's a, you know, of course, everybody knows what this is. This is a, a, a fake uh, Yan uh, Dynasty uh, charger uh, with an extremely rare pattern on it and uh, complete with a, an apocryphal uh, Persian market mark on the back and so forth. So just stay, you know, be very careful buying when you go to visit auctions online, if you do this often, and live auctioneers are invaluable, um, be extremely suspicious. If you see what you know in a New York market or a London market would be, you know, a, a 10, 20, 50, 100,000, $2 million thing, and it's being offered in some podunk auction house with an estimate of three to $500, along with a lot of other great fakes or great looking pieces, be extremely weary, leery of that. Uh, the likelihood of these all being okay, or even some of them being okay, is extremely remote. And I can't say that enough. After the last auction these rascals did, I got emails from dozens of people. Um, I wish I'd saved them, but uh, you know, basically saying I bought this pair of you know Ming chargers and I don't want to pay for them, or the big pair of um, Ming dragon planters, you know, for a thousand dollars and. You know, it was a buyer in Texas that bought those. He called me and he said, "What am I going to do?" And I said, "I said, you know, cancel the transaction. It's fraud, all right? Because they actually do say the Ming Dynasty, uh, Zun Di Dynasty, you know, Zun Di period, and all this other stuff. And it's absolute nonsense. Just ridiculous." All right, that's it for this week. Uh, we'll be working on some other things next week, as always, and uh, we'll update the newsletter by this evening. And I hope you all had it. And we're going to cover this auction regarding this Ruware Bowl here on the cover of the Sotheby's catalog. It brought uh, $38 million in case you missed it. And a uh, fabulous, fabulous example. All right. Everybody have a great and safe weekend. And if you're going shopping, hitting the auctions of the flea markets or wherever you're doing, galleries, uh, good luck out there and be careful. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.